for the last two years, I've been using the Polar H10 ECG chest strap as my main heart rate tracker for both personal use and for all the testing on this YouTube channel. And I'm not alone. Several scientific studies have used it as a reference device. However, is the Polar H10 accurate? Or in other words, is the Polar H10 good enough to be used as the gold standard in research? Well, that is exactly what they tried to find out in this scientific study from the Swiss Federal Institute of Sport. In this video, we'll find out if you can use the Polar H10 during your exercises to measure your heart rate and heart rate variability reliably. And as always, I do not want to waste your time, so there are timestamps in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. In this video, we'll discuss the accuracy of the Polar H10 for measuring your heart rate during sports and see if you can rely on its results to get good heart rate readings. We'll also compare it to a multi-lead portable ECG device commonly used in research and in the clinic. Now, all of this is based on this study right here from 2019, where researchers wanted to find out how you can reliably detect each heartbeat during exercise. Now, in the paper, they state that before the paper came out, there wasn't really any consensus of what were good ways of measuring each heartbeat during moderate to heavy exercise. Now, classically, detecting heartbeats is done using electrocardiography, or ECG in short, which records the electrical impulses of the heart. One established reference method for portable ECG measurements is called an ECG monitor, which is basically a wearable device that records the heart's electrical signals using several electrodes. One example of how these electrodes could be positioned is shown here in the first figure of the paper. However, these Holter monitors are generally still quite bulky devices that can take quite a bit of time to apply, as you can see in this image search right here. Also, before this study came out, the Holter monitor was only tested at rest and during indoor cycling, which involves very little upper body movement. The Holter ECG might actually struggle with more active sports because of all the extra noise that is introduced with the movements. So an alternative is the Polar H10, which is also an EEG device, but is much smaller and much more portable. However, the downside of the Polar H10 is that it basically only has two electrodes. So let's dig into the study results and find out if you can rely on the Polar H10 to give you accurate heart rate and heart rate variability results. The way they researched that in the scientific study is by having five men and five women do five types of activities while wearing both the Polar H10 and the Holter monitor. They then validated the accuracy of both by manually going through all the ECG recordings and counting the number of mistakes. Now the tasks that each person had to do were quite interesting. First, they had to sit in a chair and read for five minutes, followed by five minutes of household chores. I'm not kidding, the study participants had to wipe the floor with a mop and hang laundry at their own pace. Now the authors claim that this choice of activity was according to international guidelines, but I would say the same thing if I wanted to use research money to clean my house and do my laundry. Now the next three activities were more sports related, where the participants had to do five minutes of walking on a treadmill, five minutes of jogging on a treadmill, and finally five minutes of strength training. So after all the raw data is collected, the next step is to evaluate the quality of that data. The researchers had the default polar algorithm and the algorithm used by the Holter ECG device automatically detect the peaks of each heartbeat. And to see how accurately this was done, they then basically went through the recordings by eye and checked if there were any mistakes. And they defined three types of mistakes as is shown here in this figure I adapted from the paper. Now in this figure, you can see three ECG signals plotted in blue and the automatically detected peaks are marked in red. Now the first type of error is failing to detect the peak as you can see on top right here. You can see that one of the peaks was not recognized by the algorithm though all the others were. Now the second type of mistake is detecting the wrong peak, as you can see in the middle right here, where the smaller peak was detected instead of the big peak that should have been detected. Now the third type of error is missing heart rate due to noise in the signal, and that's what you can see for the bottom signal in the beginning right here. Now there's quite a bit of noise and the algorithm cannot make out what the actual peak is. 
Based on these definitions, the signal quality is then basically defined as the percentage of heart rate peaks that were correctly detected. So a signal quality of 99% means that 99% of the peaks were correctly detected and 1% was wrongly detected. And a wrong detection can be any of the three mistakes listed before. Note that I am simplifying the explanation just a little bit, since they're actually looking at the number of wrongly detected RR intervals, which are basically the distances between the peaks. But this more or less boils down to the same thing, and I don't want to take too much of your time, since you probably need the time to watch some more cat videos right after you finish this one. So let's get to the results. The signal quality during the different activities is displayed in this table right here. On top are the five activities and the overall quality, and on the left I indicated the Holter ECG and the Polar H10. I would split these activities into two parts. The left three activities, which include sitting, doing household chores and walking, are the ones that involve fewer and less strong motions. And the right two, which are jogging and strength training, include more movement. If we first look at the activities with little motion, we see that both the Holter ECG device and the Polar H10 are super accurate, both being very close to 100%. At worst, which was during household chores, they made mistakes about 0.3% of the time, which means that overall they're basically spot on. However, big differences occur when we look at the activities with more movement, so jogging and strength training. The performance of the Polar H10 ECG chest strap stays more or less the same, dropping only ever so slightly. However, the Holter ECG device has a very large drop in signal quality, with a more than 10% drop in signal quality during jogging and a roughly 8% drop during strength training. So this shows us that the Polar H10 is outperforming the typical gold standard Holzer ECG quite significantly for the more high movement exercises. We can see that overall the Polar H10 has a signal quality of 99.6% over all activities, which is super good, whereas the Holter ECG has a total signal quality of only 94.6%. By the way, if you're wondering what type of mistakes these devices made, most mistakes for both systems were due to missing peak detections, which was the first option of the figure I showed you before, though the Polar H10 definitely made fewer mistakes than the Holter ECG. So what can we conclude from these results? Well, first of all, it means that you can probably be pretty confident that if you use the Polar H10 to track your heart rate during exercise, that it will be relatively accurate. Second, it means that I'm personally very happy with my choice of ECG device for all of the testing I've done. And I'm now even more confident in the results I shared with you over the last years when it comes to heart rate testing. I've previously confirmed myself that two Polar H10s worn at the same time give almost identical results, but the study presented here is an even better validation of the Polar H10. By the way, before I get to the conclusions, first a quick side note. If you want to get the latest updates on which wearables are good for sports and health tracking, consider subscribing to this channel and also liking this video. Of course, it would also make me really happy, but it's totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's get back to the video. In this study, they conclude that during moderate to intense exercise, an advanced ECG chest strap like the Polar H10 is recommended over a Holter monitor. Furthermore, for tracking heart rate and heart rate variability, the Polar H10 is likely as good as the Holter monitor in settings with little or no movement. However, in the clinical setting where abnormalities in ECG signals need to be detected, a Holter monitor is still recommended since it has more electrodes and records more details. Still, for tracking heart rate and heart rate variability at home, you are good to go with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. Then the final question that remains is, are all chest straps as good as the Polar H10? Well, in the study they conclude that all other advanced chest belts will likely perform very well too. Now, I'm personally not sure if we can state that universally, since a lot will also depend on the algorithms used by the companies. So ideally, we would test this on a case-by-case -case basis. If at some point you decide you want to buy a Polar H10 ECG chest strap, any other device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, and at the same time you want to support this channel, there are affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide some discounts. 
Now, if you're looking for heart rate tracking from a smartwatch, check out this overview I made of over 50 watches. For people looking for reliable heart rate tracking on Android, the Huawei Watch GT3 series has amazing heart rate tracking, and you can find those videos right here. I'll also link the recent reviews I did on Garmin watches right here. Now, I hope this video provided you with some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.